I serve a risen Savior, He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever some may say. I see His hand of mercy, I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's always here. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus is today. He walks with me and talks with me along my narrow way. He lives, He lives, salvation to impart. You last I know He lives. He lives within my heart. Verse 3. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christians, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujah to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. God other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives, for Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along my narrow way. He lives.
And when you were hanging at the cross, you said, forgive them for they know not what they do. Father, cause us to have a humble spirit to yes, forgive yes. those, Lord God, that have come against us, that have hurt our person, maybe even ruined our name, Lord God, that have caused difficulties, Lord God. Teach us how to forgive, Lord God, so that we can minister, Lord God, this love, just like Charles said, that agape love, Lord God, that will minister to each and every one. And we thank you for this reward now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. John 20, verses 19 through 29. Later on that day, the disciples had gathered together, but fearful of the Jews, had locked all the doors in the house. Mm -hmm. Jesus entered and stood among them and said, Peace to you. Then he showed his hands and his side, and the disciples, seeing the master with their own eyes, were exuberant. And Jesus repeated the greeting, Peace to you. Just as the Father sent me, I send you. Then he took a deep breath. And breathe into them. Receive the Holy Spirit, he yeah. said. If you forgive someone's sins, they're gone for good. If you don't forgive sins, what are you going to do with them? But Thomas, sometimes called the twin, one of the twelve, was not there, not there when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, we've seen the master. But he said, unless I see the nail holes in his hands and put my finger in the nail holes and stick my hand in his side, I won't believe. Eight days later, his disciples were again in the room. This time Thomas was with them. Jesus came through the locked doors and he stood among them and said, Peace to you. Then he has focused his attention to Thomas. Take your finger and examine my hands. Take your hand and stick it in my side. Don't be unbelieving. Believe. Thomas said, My master, my God. And in the King James or the regular version that I learned, my Lord and my God. Yes, yes. Jesus said, So you believe because you've seen with your own eyes. Even better blessings are in store for those who believe without seeing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Here we have a group, you know, that's locked up in a room. Yeah. Uh -huh. They're fearful. Yeah. They, they all you know, flew the coop. And as soon as Jesus was hanging on the cross, they all took off, excepting the, the, the three Marys were there and John the Beloved. But they all, they all headed for the hills, you uh -huh. know. If they hang him, what are they going to do with us? Yeah. You know. And so they we're told to, to come together and uh, to pray, but uh, when we see here that they were fearful and locked up, fear comes when you're thinking about your person or your body, your emotions, a fear just comes flooding in. You ask a little kid, did you do that? Uh-uh, I didn't do that, you know. Because they're afraid they might get a spanking, they're afraid they might have to stand in the corner, and for you newer type of people, you have to uh, have time out. <laughs> Whatever that is. <laughs> Fear also comes when you cheat in a test and, and you believe you're going to make it and, and you get caught. 
It seems like all the time that you purposely do something in the level of lying or cheating, you're going to get caught. Now, these apostles were there and they felt like if we lock ourselves in, we won't get caught. And, and so they were there. And then all of a sudden it comes through the doors in Jesus. And stood above them and told them, peace be with you. I can just imagine when they saw him, you know, they were, they were trembling. You know, their, their, their thoughts were, who is this? You know, it couldn't be Jesus. Because as we read uh, the scourging of the cross, that when they crucified the Lord, he, you couldn't recognize him. Uh -huh. And when he was dead and when the last word that he said on the cross, it is finished. He breathed his last breath and then he died. The Bible says that when a guard came by, uh, because when they hung uh, people, they crucified them. They would come by and break their legs because the legs were propped up uh, with nails and they would break the legs to make sure that they were dead. But when the guard and the person came by and saw that he was dead, this man is dead and did not break any bones in Jesus' body. The soldiers around there, even afterwards, they said, Truly this man is dead. Truly this man who they mocked and said, Jesus, King of the Jews, you know, truly he was the King of the Jews. Amen. And here he is presenting himself in this room. And they look upon him and Jesus is telling him, peace be with you. We heard this morning about testimonies, you know, when, when their faith was put to test. And our brother's pastor here went and said is, it's no testimony unless you've gone through tests. you got to go through a test. And uh, one of the things I remember is that... Uh, that these apostles, they hadn't gone through a test because they were just, they were just right there. And their testing was, you know, uh, to rebuke the fear that they had in them. Uh, to pray the Father that the Holy Spirit would come and, uh, and make them whole and, and forgive them for being, uh, what do you call it when somebody walks out on somebody? He, when they abandoned the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, they were they were good friends, mm -hmm. and they were kind of like looky loose, you know, sounds good, looks good, feels good, you know. But as soon as they saw Jesus on the cross, they evacuated the earth. <laughs> and so faith comes by the attesting, yeah. you know, and they were being tested. They didn't know that, but they did. The other day, um, on Friday night, I was doing a Good Friday service yes. on the Seven Last Words. Mm -hmm. I, at this church, we had been praying for a Luis Vega. And I told Pastor, you know, he's got um, uh, the, the, the illness that that afflicts his whole body, his nervous system. And he probably got the flu from someone that had been in the church or wherever he had been. And uh, he, he was in the hospital and he's got muscular dystrophy. And so his body continues to um, uh, deteriorate. Um, they had him uh, there on this, the doctor that says, you know, um, uh, doesn't look good. And they had to tell the mother that he probably has about two weeks to live. 
And the, the testing, I think sometimes is, this is a, a mother that's only had one child. This is a single mother, Martha, that only had one son, 19 years old, muscular dystrophy, in a wheelchair, but now he's in the hospital and he's dying. And uh, I got a phone call and, uh, from Pastor Nava, and one that says, yeah, could you go to the hospital and pray for Gloria? She's just besides herself because the doctors say her son is dying. And we begin to pray, and this church began to pray, and then we lifted up in prayer. And I, uh, and I shared with Pastor, how could, uh, how could this young man, who's so beautiful, I look at him in his wheelchair and, he, uh, and they bring him, uh, he lives in Ventura, and they bring him on, um, on Wednesday, and they bring him on Friday, and they bring him on Sunday, and he's always excited to be in church. And they, and the lift brings him down off his wheelchair, and then he comes into church, and he's always smiling. To me, he just looks like a like an angel, you know. And as a minister, it encourages me. My gosh, this young man has so much faith, yeah. tremendous faith. And I, I know the Holy Spirit moved on me to continue. And when the Holy Spirit moves on me to pray for someone, I don't let up and I keep praying. Amen. And we kept praying, this church, that church, and different people, I told them, I just love Luis. I just love Luis. And we, and we kept praying. And I thought the week before last, he went home. He, he went home because he told his mom, I, I want to be home when I go past. And he had the choice of, of having... Um, more comfortable drugs while he was in the hospital, but he said, I want to go home. So in these last two weeks, he went home to his house, to his home in Ventura. Uh, uh, people were praying and people were visiting and, uh, uh, and praying for him. And one of the deacons from the other church says, Bernice, he looks, he looks real bad. He just looks, his, his eyes look vacant and, you know, it just grieved me. It just grieved me, and I kept praying, Lord, you know, this is a beautiful young man. He's going to mentor college, and and he's got he's got the most amazing uh, spirit. His attitude in life is not bitter. Why am I in a wheelchair? But his his whole persona is of praise to the Lord. By the time I got done with the seventh word and I looked up here, they were wheeling um, Luis in the wheelchair and he was in church Friday night. Amen, amen. <laughs> and there was a glow on his face and I looked on his face and I was, I was mouthing, Luis, I've been praying for you. And he was saying this, I know, I know, I've been praying for you. <laughs> It just intensifies my faith. Hallelujah. hallelujah. When the Spirit of God falls, hallelujah, yeah. that encourages different people in our membership in the church to see, you know, see what I've done. Yes. See, I can, I, can, I can go through any door. No obstacles. And people can lock the Lord out. Hallelujah. But He'll still come through. Hallelujah. When Christ comes on the scene, hallelujah, yes. because he is our light. Yes. He is our salvation. Yes. Yes. Whom shall we fear? Yes. The Lord is the strength of our life. Yes. Whom shall we be afraid of? Yes. Whom? Yes. Early on, I, uh, I uh, had to go pray for a girl, her name is Jennifer. And by golly, she was 19 also. And the mother had called, to, called me up and said, uh, Bernice, uh, my daughter's been in an accident. Uh, she worked for the airlines and, um, 
and they say, they say that she's going to be a vegetable uh, because she has had major uh, spinal column damage to her body and they say she's going to be a vegetable and they were telling her, give up lady and resign her to your God or your Lord and let her go because uh, she's going to be a vegetable. If you pray to your God, pray to your God that she died, that she go on to be with your God. So you, you can imagine um, these, these different doctors probably was an atheist, probably, you know. But uh -huh. Then the psychiatrist came up to Beverly Stevens and says, Beverly, I'm really, I'm really, I'm, I'm, hmm. I'm really concerned about you. You need, you need help because you're so stubborn. You can either realize that your daughter's going to be a vegetable, and that's it. So when I got the phone call, she says, "Bernice, I need recruits." <laughs> and uh, and she already knew the type of faith that I had, you know. And we had prayed together, you know. And uh, so I got on the flight, my husband bought a ticket for me and I got on the flight to be um, in Colorado with her. And we knew that, it, that if we both trusted your God together, and trust means to believe God. Yes. That he is, and uh, yes. you know, he's the author and finisher of our faith, yes. but also, hallelujah. Yes. Do you know that he'll move, hallelujah, yes. by your faith? Yes. Yes. He'll move yes. by, by who you believe he is. Oh, yes. He'll move if he tells you peace be with you and you yes. say, I receive that peace, I'm at peace, and now I'm going to pray with all my faith to you, Lord God, change doctors' minds, change psychiatrists' minds, change, you know, Lord, but I see that there's a healing yeah. down, down the line. And so together, Beverly and I prayed for Jennifer. We prayed for her healing. And uh the one day we were there three times in and out of the hospital and we kept praying, kept touching her arms, kept touching her legs. Uh, and uh, she was in a coma. She had, you know, she hadn't uh, woken up or anything. And I went to her, Beverly, you know what? The Lord is here with us. And I see Jennifer, I'm not kidding you, I see Jennifer moving her left arm, yet she was just as stiff as a board, but I said, I see in the spirit, she's moving her left arm, I see in the spirit that she's sitting up, I see it. So we begin to pray, yes Lord, you're gonna release her from her shackles, hallelujah, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna wake her up, hallelujah, you're gonna bring new life in her. Amen. Just like Jesus was breathing life on, on his apostles, and after so many days, the doctors were amazed, Jennifer woke up. Yeah. Jennifer started moving her arms. And I want to tell you, she was not a vegetable. She remains, for the rest of her life, paralyzed from the waist down. But she gets into a wheelchair, hallelujah, and she goes to school and goes to college and moves around, but she's not a vegetable. And she's a mouthpiece for the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. And for God is not giving the spirit of fear. You know, am I gonna am I gonna be a vegetable? Is she gonna be a vegetable? No, 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 no. But he's given us that power to, you know, come out and reach out and touch and say, I know you can do it, Lord. Yeah. And we just ask that it's your perfect will to be with her yeah. and heal her, and he did, yeah. Yeah. he did. Yeah. And the Lord went and told these men to stay there, mm -hmm. that as they 
were filled with this power that they were going to have to come to people to, to teach them how to forgive sins. You know that's the biggest thing in life to forgive someone that's hurt you. Especially somebody you love. Especially somebody in the family. Especially somebody in the church. Let me tell you a real old story. There was, uh, I was uh, serving at a, at a four square church and um, there happened to be two culprits that were writing uh, poison pen letters. And they were writing them to the senior pastor about me. Now, the first letter uh, was mailed to the church, Oxford Christian Center, mailed right there, but concerning Bernice Gomez. I remember Bernice Gomez. So I opened it up in the pastor's study and I said, look at what this, look at what this is right here. You know, this is not true. This is not true. And the pastor went, yeah, well, you know. And then I looked at him and I said, you know, I've been a servant here. And I've proved to be a good servant for 11 years. And I, and I, and I believe that you should believe me when I tell you this is not true. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, the, the Poison Pen Club kept writing letters. Uh, they kept delivering them at the church mail staff and putting them in the mail slot. The pastor says, another letter came for, for me. And I said, throw it in the trash. That's where it belongs. Throw it in the trash. And uh, open them up if you want to. I don't need to read them, you know. And so then he kept reading them and he says, maybe this is true because more letters have come, you know. And I said, you know, I'm so sorry uh, that you let me down concerning the trust that we have. And I let him know I feel hurt that you didn't you trust me, you know. Amen. Uh, meanwhile, back at the ranch, you know, I get praying for the Poison Pen Letter Club. <laughs> and the Lord went and told me to forgive them. And uh, uh, eventually, uh, maybe two people, they were going to uh, Church on the Way, which is a large church. Mm -hmm. And they were uh, writing me a letter, how are you doing? And, you know, and now trying to make amends for the past that they had done. And I, I kind of got an inkling that was one of the poison pen letters, and, but I had already forgiven the person already. In my life, I learned how to forgive, and that was one of the testings. Yeah. When people come up against you, uh, you need to forgive them. And you know that scripture today says, what do you mean with somebody else's sins? Or what do you mean with somebody else's offenses? Or what do you mean with somebody's back talk? Give it to the Lord. It's not my problem, it's yours, Lord. Amen. You know, I forgive yeah. because you first forgave me. Yeah. Right. Today I, I'll, I'll let you know that you are free indeed and you're free not. Yeah. You're, 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 you're not nailed to the cross. Yeah. If you have heart and mind to forgive one another. Yeah. It's what is that's the that's the testing. And you still forgive those that love you, that mess up. Sometimes they don't mean to. But sometimes they do. Yes. Amen. Sometimes it's purposely because they're envious or jealous yeah. of, of what you have, of, of how you're used, or how you minister, yeah. or, or, or any X, Y, Z number of things, you know. And we have to learn to forgive those. Yeah. For as God so loved the world, he forgave yeah, right. the whole world. Yeah. We learn by that example that, that he loves us so much. Yeah. And so, again, when he looked at Thomas, he said, you know, go ahead. Touch the place where, where I was wounded. And, and Thomas said, oh, my Lord and my God. That each time that we go through a testing, we're going to say, why? Yeah. That each time through a testing, we're going to say, why me? Why me? That each time through a testing, we say, oh God, what a, what a choice.
place you put me in. Hallelujah. Because truly I serve a resurrected Savior. Hallelujah. And he's going to resurrect me from this problem too. And truly because God lives. Hallelujah. I live also. Because I rise above this thing or this problem or this situation. Because Christ first did that. There is nothing that keep us, can keep us down. Ain't no power to keep us down. Hallelujah. But serving Jesus Christ is a privilege. So therefore, brethren, when we gather today and say is, you know, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of love and one of a sound mind.